left, do your right left uppercut. Right left, right left, do your right left uppercut. Shalom family, it's your brother Benaiah Ben Israel. Let's continue our look at the Hebrews of Savannah, Georgia. We previously began our journey by reading references which describe the children of Judah taken captive into Spain and Portugal by King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon and by General Titus of Rome. We also read multiple old references which describe the bruise as black, swarthy, and brown. New references, on the other hand, describe the bruise as white. This is why we always say, use the old references as the following reference reads and it reads in his habit and manners a very formal a tall thin very black man like a spaniard or jew about 50 years old and the next reference reads and it reads the spanish jew is always dark complexion well the next reference reads as i tentatively survey the jewish population on the streets of London. I fancied I could perceive three different cast of features. The first Jewish par excellence and never to be mistaken. Skipping ahead. Of the first form, I need say little to you, begging you merely to recollect that the contour is convex, the eyes long and fine, the outer angles running towards the temples, the brow and the nose apt to form a single convex line, the nose comparatively narrow at the base, the eyes consequently approaching each other, lips very full, mouth projecting, chin small, and the whole physiognomy, in other words, the way they looked, when swarthy as it often is, has an African look and the next reference reads he was a short dark man with restless and intelligent eyes he was said to be a Jew and he was called John Bryan all right so we also reviewed cranial analysis of Spanish and Portuguese brews and discovered that they matched the skulls of the Negroes and the following reference reads the same variability occurs in other finds but the skulls of most Sephardim or Spanish and Portuguese brews are doli cosephalic which is the shape of the Negro skull now next we also read references showing the movement of the Spanish and Portuguese brews from Spain and Portugal into Africa Brazil and England and from there into Savannah, Georgia. Let's take a quick peek at the London Museum who has pictures of the brews in an exhibit called the Lakish Relief. So let's continue down the line. We've got more slaves that are leaving the city. Now somebody tell me the difference between this guy and this guy. Whose side do you think this guy's on? The, the Assyrians, yeah, the conquerors, the Assyrians. And whose side do you think this guy's on? The slave, yeah, the people from Israel or Lachish, you can tell also by their distinctive hairstyle depicted in archaeology. The slave, yeah, the people from Israel or Lachish, you can tell also by their distinctive hairstyle depicted in archaeology. The slave, yeah, the people from Israel or Lachish, you can tell also by their distinctive hairstyle depicted in archaeology. Right, left. Right, left, do your right, left, uppercut. Right, left, right, left, do your right, left, uppercut. It is also important to note that these dark skinned Christianized brews began mixing with European Christians. As the following reference reads and it reads The Jews of England lived apart from their fellow subjects. Nevertheless, they had eyes and ears and they were not insensible to the blandishments of beauty. The Jews have ever enjoyed the reputation of being admirers of the fair sex. Many a Samson became an easy prey to many Delilah. The golden tresses, the sapphire eyes, the, the soft voices of the fair daughters of Albion did more to draw followers of the synagogue to the church than is usually imagined. 
nor did lovely English girls disdain the considerable fortunes and dark complexions of the Jews, more especially of those of Sephardic origin. And the next reference reads and reads, according to Juan Jose, his lineage was Spanish, tied to the principal families with honorable employment, as many of his contemporaries said that his family was formed with old Christians. The mixing of the Christianized brews with other races wasn't just limited to London. The Christianized brews took their show on the road. As the following reference reads, and it reads, naturally, many new Christians, which are the converted brews, in many parts of Mexico, assimilated and intermarried with old Christians and Amerindians. So Judah's dark, swarthy, brown, black seed was mixed by his Christianized brothers and became a speckled bird. We can find his speckled seed within the Spanish and Portuguese brews as they made their way into Savannah from London. As they arrived in Savannah, they consisted of different types of Jews, which included Spanish and Portuguese brews, Ashkenazi, and others. The Spanish Portuguese, however, made up the majority of these brews, as the following reference reads, and it reads, Meanwhile, the first batch of settlers under Oglethorpe had hardly reached the Savannah River when an unexpected vessel arrived with 40 Jews on board. This company consisted of people of two descriptions. The one, for the most part, Sephardim, came out as ordinary colonists at their own expense. The second comprised assisted Ashkenazi immigrants. Not only were most of these brews Spanish and Portuguese, the majority of them were poor. As the following reference reads, and it reads, a hundred years ago, the Jews possessed no middle class. There were perhaps 150 to 200 families that might be considered rich, about two thirds of which belonged to the Spanish and Portuguese congregation. Then we should find at most as many families engaged in small and retail trade. And finally, we should see a floating mass, at least five times as numerous as the other two classes together, consisting of hucksters, hawkers, journeymen, and others, either verging on pauperism or poverty or steeped hopelessly in its abyss. These brews settled in Savannah on the west side of the city near a church called the First African Baptist Church. They also met on the same street as the church, roughly three to four blocks away. So at this point, we searched for Israel within the church. We started by looking at the former pastor of the church and we noted that the former pastors were called the Venerable Father in Israel, or the Father in Israel. We also noted that in front of the sanctuary hangs a commemorative plaque honoring a former pastor of the church, referring to him as Israel, and I quote, a prince and a great man fallen this day in Israel. 2 Samuel 3, verse 38. And now let's turn our attention to the members of the congregation of the First African Baptist Church. Let's see if we can find additional evidence of church members identifying as Israel. Now, the first thing we need to understand is that when Jews traveled across the Atlantic to the Americas during the early colonial times and gathered together, they would sometimes form a particular group among their Israelite brothers and sisters. And this group was formed for Israelites by Israelites. And it was called the Israelite Society. As the following reference reads, it reads, in the year 1839, the Israelite Society was started and services were held in a hall on South Water Street in Winyard Lane with Samson Thurman as president and Isaac Hoffman as minister. 
So you may wonder, what does the Israelite society composed by Israelites for Israelites have to do with the first African Baptist church? Well, the answer is simple. We see the Israelite society listed as one of the clubs of the church. The members of the church were divided into clubs. As the following reference reads, and it reads, the members were divided into clubs for the purpose of raising money, both for the church extension and the centennial celebration. The following is a list of clubs and the amount each gave for the church extension. And it reads, the Children's Israelite Society. The members are Mr. March Houston, he's the president, Mrs. Annie Burke, vice president, Mr. A.G. Brown, Secretary, the Reverend E.K. Love, D.D., Treasurer. They gave the church $10. And we can also find another Israelite society within the church, and it's called the Young Ladies Select Branch of the Israelite Society. The members are Mr. March Houston, the President, Mrs. Myra Miller, Vice President, Ms. Lou Hines, Secretary, Mrs. Mammy Hines, treasurer. They gave the church $2.50. So after seeing the church pastors referred to as the father in Israel, and after seeing the church members being members of the Israelite society, an organization for Israel by Israel, we aren't surprised when we find sermons ministered to the First Baptist Church congregation explaining things in Hebrew. And now, I hope you don't mind if I read the following sermon like they would have read it back in the 1800s. Because I want you to see that they would sometimes teach the first African Baptist church a little Hebrew. The Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want He maketh me to lie down in green pastures troubles everything that you've been going through god said to tell you you're about to come out yes you are now i hope that's all right i said i, I hope that's all right and the sermon reads it says a sermon delivered on the occasion of presenting the prize banner to the first african baptist church in Savannah, Georgia. And the following reference reads, and it reads, there are three words of Hebrew origin of a kindred nature expressing different shades of meaning of a bear. Oath represents a small sign or bear. Ness, an ensign a token of a thing. And the goal, a flag, a banner, a standard from the verbal form, the goal, to cover, to glitter, and to shine, or to lift up a banner. Ah. Now, I just wanted to show you that these church folk knew a little Hebrew. In fact, they heard a little bit of Hebrew on Sunday morning. Therefore, we are not perplexed or confused when we see Hebrew writing on the pews. As we continue to uncover the missing pieces of our history, I want to remind you, family, to stay on your guard. There are enemies out there that don't want you to find out who you are. So family, stay tuned for more information to come. Stay blessed, family, 
Angelo. 